scriptures talk about a blessedness that happens to a man whose delight is in the law of God. So as someone says, it says, but his delight is in the law of God. And doth he meditate day and night. He says that that man is like a tree planted by the rivers of water, whose leaves do not wither, and who bears fruit in every season. As you are about listening to this message, we believe that your life is going to be like that man planted by the rivers of water. Your leaves are forever going to bear. And we know that your, your season will not pass by. You will forever shine and you will forever bear fruit. We have a lot of content to share with you. So we would entreat you to subscribe to this channel as well as like us hit that notification bell to receive more updates from us because we know that whatever content here is going to set you on calls at every time it's going to make you attain whatever stature that christ wants you to attain thank you i want to share with you a very deep spiritual mystery tonight that controls relevance a mystery tonight that controls the continuity of the impact upon the life of man. Hallelujah. This is a mystery that controls transgenerational relevance. It is the key that can keep you after many years, even when people are falling by the wayside. The Bible says, better is the end of a thing than the beginning thereof. That means that just because you started well, does not mean you will finish well just because you started um from a standpoint of relevance and impact it does not mean that you will finish that way pay attention ecclesiastes chapter 3 we'll read from verse 1 to 8 to everything there is a season someone says season so the bible tells us that there are seasons and a time to every purpose under the heavens uh -huh. There is a time to be born, it says. There is a time to die. There is a time to plant. There is a time to pluck up that which is planted. Verse 3. There is a time to kill. There is a time to heal. There is a time to break down. There is a time to build up. Verse 4. There is a time to weep. There is a time to laugh. There is a time to mourn. There is a time to dance. There is a time to cast away stones. And there is a time to gather stones together. There is a time to embrace. And there is a time to refrain from embracing. We are still reading. There is a time to get. And there is a time to lose. There is a time to keep. And there is a time to cast away. There is a time to rend. And there is a time to sow. There is a time to keep silence and there is a time to speak. The last verse. There is a time to love and there is a time to hate. There is a time for war and there is a time of peace. Oh, intelligent student, what was the common word in every sentence? Time. 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 Everything kept changing except one word. He connected everything to times and he connected everything to seasons. First Chronicles chapter 12, please, and verse 32. First Chronicles chapter 12 and verse 32. And of the children of Issachar, the Bible says, which were men. Help us under the anointing, please. They were men that had understanding of the times. It says, and they knew what Israel ought to do. As a result, the heads of them were 200 and all their brethren were at their command. They were people who had an understanding of the times and they knew what Israel had to do. Ready for the last verse? Psalm 90 and verse 12. A verse for wise people. So teach us to number our days that we may apply our hearts unto wisdom can we read it together one to read 
that we may apply our hearts unto wisdom. Please may I request that protocol all the vacant seats aside from these ones. Please let them be filled. There's no reason why we should have empty seats when there are people standing. Please. Please. Hallelujah. We rise in this kingdom on the strength of the mysteries that we know. I've taught you that a mystery is a modus operandi. A, a body of knowledge that is privy to a group of people. In this case, privy to believers. Men and women who are in Christ. And so when the Bible talks about the mysteries of the kingdom, it is a revelation of the modus operandi of the kingdom. The way the kingdom operates. So that by accessing these mysteries, we can reign, we can excel in life, we can live when the Lord opened me up to this truth, it so impacted my life. I, I wish that I, I could gather the whole world and preach this message to everyone alive. Because, as you will be learning, there are severe consequences for not knowing these truths that I'm about to share. It does not matter whether you are a pastor, a politician, a businessman. It doesn't matter what walk of life, young, old. This is a truth that applies to all. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. This is the secret for transgenerational relevance. You understand what I'm teaching you tonight. After 30 years, you will still be standing. Standing strong and doing so much for the kingdom. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. The Bible tells us in Genesis chapter 41. Please pay attention. That there was a king in Egypt called the Pharaoh of Egypt. Is that true? And then the Bible says once upon a time that this Pharaoh of Egypt went to bed. And... This Pharaoh had a dream, and it was a very, very mysterious dream. It was a dream that troubled him. He was so troubled by that dream when he woke up, the Bible says, he gathered all his wise men. We're going to read it, but just a background. And he said, what is the meaning of this? I'm, I'm, I'm faced with a dream here that I cannot interpret. That dream you see, ladies and gentlemen, controls a mystery there is a revelation behind that dream the first thing i may want is, is powerful because there are certain levels of revelation you cannot be trusted with until you rise to certain realms the dream that pharaoh had even though he did not honor the god of the hebrews the god of heaven he was the only one who was in a position to do something about that dream there are times that God will have to make do with unbelievers because there are no sufficient unbelievers in strategic positions that can allow God to reveal some things. Hallelujah. Which is dangerous. We must never get to a point in our lives where God would have to teach us through unbelievers simply because believers have not accepted positions of strategic influence to allow them host the purposes of God. For a season or for a generation. Anyway, but in this case, so Pharaoh has this dream and he calls on the people. And eventually Joseph comes and he begins a discussion that will be a lesson for us tonight. Praise the name of the Lord. Please follow me patiently as we explore this dream. Because the dream is a mystery. A mystery that speaks of a... Um, a reality that is in the life of all men. Failure to know this will cost you more than you can imagine. Genesis 41 from verse 1. Help us Holy Spirit. And it came to pass at the end of two full years that Pharaoh dreamed and behold he stood by the river. Verse 2. It's a long reading. Please be patient. Media, let's walk together. And behold, there came up out of the river seven well-favored kind and fat-fleshed, and they fed in the midew. Uh -huh. Behold, seven other kind came up after them out of the river, ill-favored and lean-fleshed. 
was just talking of cows or calves and stood by the other kind upon the brink of the river and the ill-favored and lean flesh kind did eat up the seven well-favored and fat kind this is the first mystery this is his dream now pharaoh has a dream and he's seen two sets of cows one fat healthy looking the other slim and then in the process of time remember we're dealing with time that the lean ones ate the fat ones and never increased in size just went like that verse 5 and he slept and dreamed the second time and behold seven ears of corn came up before one stock rank and good next verse please and behold seventeen ears and blasted with the east wind sprung up after them and the seventeen years devoured the seven rank and full ears and pharaoh awoke and behold it was a dream and it came to pass in the morning that his spirit was troubled and he sent and called for all the magicians of egypt and all the wise men thereof and pharaoh told them his dream but there was none that could interpret them unto pharaoh follow carefully then spake the chief butler unto pharaoh saying i do remember my faults this day pharaoh was wrought with his servant and put me in the ward in the captain of the guard's house both me and the chief baker he's narrating something that happened and we dreamed a dream in one night i and he we dreamed each man according to the interpretation of his dream and there was there with us a young man an hebrew servant to the captain of the guard and we told him and he interpreted to us our dreams to each man according to his dream did he interpret and it came to pass as he interpreted to us so it was me he restored unto mine office and him he hanged 14 and pharaoh sent and called joseph and they brought him hastily out of the dungeon and he shaved himself and changed his raiment and came in unto pharaoh pharaoh said unto joseph i have dreamed a dream and there is none that can interpret it are we still together and i have heard of thee that thou canst understand a dream to interpret it next verse joseph answered pharaoh saying it is not in me god shall give pharaoh an answer of peace pharaoh narrates the dream one more time in case you didn't get it the first time let's try it again in my dream he said behold i stood upon the bank of the river and behold there came up out of the river seven kind fat fleshed and well favored and they fed in the middle and behold seven other kind came up after them poor and very ill ill favored and lean flesh such as i never saw in all the land of egypt for badness and the lean and ill favored kind did eat up the first seven fat kind 21 and when they had eaten them up now this is the fearful part of the statement it could not be known that they had eaten them so this is not an issue of hunger now but they were still ill favored as at the beginning so i awoke and i saw in my dream and behold seven ears came out in one stock full and good and behold seven ears withered thin and blasted with the east wind sprung up after them and the thin ears devoured the seven good ears and i told this unto the magicians but there was none that could declare it unto me 25 and joseph said unto pharaoh the dream that fell the dream of pharaoh is one and god had shown pharaoh what he is about to do the dream that pharaoh had pharaoh forget about all of the different things you saw it is the same thing you have seen isn't it powerful 
different scenarios, but the message is the same. God had to keep emphasizing to Pharaoh, pay attention because what I am showing you will surely come to pass. Now Joseph is interpreting the dream. Joseph said unto, okay, next verse 26, the seven good kind are seven years. That means the cows have nothing to do with cows. The plants have nothing to do with plants. Can you already see that many people have been making mistakes in their interpretation of dreams? If many of you were to interpret these dreams now, you will be surprised at the many ungodly, extra-biblical interpretations that will come from this dream. Is that true? Most people will start talking about something that God even is not, His attention is not there. This already is a lesson that it truly takes grace from God to interpret correctly. I probably would have failed this interpretation woefully, hands down. Who would ever know that a cow and plants could mean time? He said, what you saw has nothing to do with animals or plants. It is a mystery of time. The seven good kind are seven years. Everybody shout time. Please say after me, years. Keep the scripture there, please. Keep the scripture. Keep the scripture. We're still working on it, media. And he says, the seven good years are seven years the dream is one and the seven thin and ill-favored kind that came up after them are also seven years and the seven empty ears blasted with the east wind shall be seven years of famine this is the thing which I have spoken unto Pharaoh, what God is about to do, he showeth unto Pharaoh. Now, pay attention. Let's take it again. You are Pharaoh, the king of Egypt, and you go to bed, and out of the many, many things you can see from the realm of the spirit, God superimposes your revelations to bring a matter of urgency that Joseph says will surely come to pass. And then you have this dream. And this young Hebrew boy comes to tell you the dream represents two sets of time. Are we still together? That the seven good cows, just like the plants, are seven good years. And that the other one represents seven years also. And here is the mystery that years can eat years. I understand that animals can eat other animals. Is that true? But I never knew that time can also eat time. Pay attention now. That seven years of plenty can be eaten by seven years of famine to the degree that you would never imagine that there was once years of plenty. This is a very powerful mystery. Please pay attention. Behold, there come seven years of great plenty throughout all the land of Egypt. And there shall arise after them seven years of famine and all the plenty shall be forgotten. Shall forgotten. Hmm. In the land of Egypt. And the famine shall consume the land. 31. And the plenty shall not be known in the land by reason of the famine following. For it shall be very grievous. Next verse. And for that the dream was doubled unto Pharaoh twice. It is because the thing is established by God and it will surely God will surely bring it to pass now therefore let Pharaoh look out for a man discreet and wise and set him over the land of Egypt he's bringing a solution now let Pharaoh do this and let him appoint officers over the land and take up a fifth part 20% of the land of Egypt in the seven plenteous years and let them gather all the food of those good years that come 
and lay up corn under the hand of Pharaoh and let them keep food in the cities. And that food shall be for store in the land against the seven years of famine. Is someone learning already? Which shall be in the land of Egypt that the land perish not throughout the famine. Just stop there. We'll take it from 37 shortly. Now please look up. Pharaoh is receiving counsel from a young boy empowered by the Spirit of God. And he's sharing a mystery that Pharaoh, no matter how powerful you are, no matter how powerful Egypt is, God is revealing to you that there is a law, the law of seasons, that it is a law that will switch. It has nothing to do with you being good. It has nothing to do with you being bad. It is the law of seasons. Is that true? And that in every man's life, born again or not, this law is not one you can pray out of your life. It is established. Pharaoh, what you have is not just a dream for Egypt. It's a mystery to be given to men. That in the life of every man born of a woman, the law of seasons is applicable to all. There will always be seasons of plenty represented by the fat cows. And there will always be seasons of leanness. The difference is whether you heed to the advice of Joseph or otherwise. Those who disobey Joseph are about to pay the price with their entire lifetime. Because years can eat years. Are we blessed? Joseph tells Pharaoh, this is not something you can pray and say, God, change it. No. You see, let me tell you this. When God created the earth, the Bible tells us that he made the stars to signify times and seasons. The law of seasons is a very powerful spiritual law that many believers have not been taught. And many well-meaning, innocent people have had to pay the price because they did not know how to discern seasons. Our opening scripture, Ecclesiastes says there is a time for everything. It begins to list various events, but the consistent factor is that there is a time for them. Hallelujah. Yes. Pharaoh Hunger is about to come to the earth. Famine is about to come to the earth. And that includes Egypt. But you have a chance now. There is a season. Here in Africa, especially in Nigeria, we have, you know, and all of that. But then let's work with what we know. We have rainy season and dry seasons. Please look up. How many of you know that all those seasons have their features? Is that true? Yes. When it is rainy, are we together now? It doesn't matter whether you are rich or poor, educated or uneducated. The moment it is rainy season, there are certain things that are given to you by reason of the season. The land is soft enough for cultivation. You do not need to labor so much to till the ground because the rain has done that for any season. Why? Because the season comes with it an advantage of a cool weather. You may not go through so much labor to clean and fight dust because the season itself helps to purify the air. If that season is done, it will switch to another season and you will look at the ground as though water never fell on it. Is that true? You will see the ground cracked. You will see wind that was ever green now looks dry and brown. And it looks like water never fell there. You look at the clouds and they are so clear you come out in the night and you can see the stars. Not because something else happened to your eyes. An advantage of seasons. Now it is still possible to farm during the dry season. But you will have to find a way of outsourcing water to simulate a rainy season during dry season for the plants to grow. This is very powerful. 
You can afford to be careless with your car, for instance, during the dry season. Your wiper is not working. Your lights are not working. You can afford. Your tires are not strong. You can play all those games. But when it is rainy season, one night you just come out and without any notification, a heavy downpour comes and you see the consequences of not having a good wiper. Is that true? You may not know how wrong you are during the dry season, but another season can show you whether you were doing right or not. Seasons are powerful. There are many things you may be doing wrong, but just because you have not arrived at a season that will show you how wrong you are, you may think you are right for a long time until seasons change. And there are times you can be doing something very right and look like a fool for many years because the season that shows your wisdom has not yet come. Once upon a time, the wisdom of Noah looked like foolishness because the season of rain had not come. Is that true? He kept putting the animals there and others were laughing at him and said, to what end is this? But a season would soon come. Pharaoh, what you saw is a mystery that happens to all men. That no, no matter how anointed, no church, no politician, no government, no nation has one season forever. Oscillating seasons is part of the law of seasons that all men must understand. Why am I telling you this? I'm teaching this message out of a heart of passion and sincerity with, with no sense of sarcasm whatsoever. Have you seen people who maximize certain seasons in their lives but they forgot that seasons will change and they ignored the advice of joseph until the seasons changed this has caught up with politicians it is terrible to be out of relevance in your lifetime this has caught up with men of god this has caught up with family people changing seasons that no season no season ever remain to a point of penury there are politicians today who were once instruments of awe and honor and because of lack of discernment of seasons they came down there are sincere men of god they didn't backslide but they were careless with the discernment of seasons and today they have been brought down to nothingness pharaoh the dream that you have is deliverance it is a mystery that if you understand will save you the law of seasons is god speaking to us in every man's life there will be this season of fatness and there will be this season of lean cows what do they mean write this down according to the vision or the dream of Pharaoh and the interpretation of Joseph. The seven years of plenty represents seasons of ease, seasons of abundance, and seasons of opportunities. The seven years of the fat calves, the seven years of the or the seven years of fat corn and, and the flourishing plants represent seven years of ease e-a-s-e -E. years of abundance and years of opportunities please if you're writing underline the word opportunity seven years of fat cows represent years of opportunity what opportunity opportunity to know god opportunity to maximize destiny opportunity to invest in your life and then the seven years of famine represent moments of constraint moments of inconvenience moments of scarcity the seven years of famine represent moments of constraint moments of inconvenience moments of scarcity for various reasons for instance let's use biological age how many of you agree that by the time 
a man is 60 or 70 years prepared or not seasons would have changed the strength that you have when you were 10 20 30 may not be there again you may not have that kind of energy again seasons have changed and if you are a worker in this country maybe a, a federal government worker a civil servant prepared or not there's something called retirement is that true the meaning of that is that you may not have the opportunity to go to work and collect a regular salary again the reason why pension works is because it's part of obedience to the advice of joseph is that true that from your seven years of work something is kept so that by the time you retire it will be given to you again we are coming there so by the time a young man in ministry who is probably in his 30s or 40s is now living in the season of a man who is 70 80 years a man who may not have the energy to run around and the young man too is doing man of god big man you know what you are doing you are already destroying the opportunity that you have for the seasons that are coming let me tell you this there are many people there are i watched an obituary there is a course in the school of ministry under personal transformation I, I teach the students on something called the graph of life. It's an attempt to give the students wisdom to help them understand the brevity of life to the end that they live efficient and effective lives. Are we together? And this, this came as a result of an obituary I saw. Please look up. In this obituary, it was a two or three minutes um, TV program. And this is what I saw. I saw a man who was in his late 80s now had died and they were announcing but for some reason they were able to gather his photos i don't know how they found it photos when he was a young boy to a teenager a young adult an adult in his middle age becoming elderly an old man together with his grandchildren and then a few moments on the sick bed before he died they ran that slide within two minutes and i saw a man's entire destiny run on a slide within two minutes when i watched that it had an impact on my life and that's where the scriptures so teach us to number our days that we may apply our hearts unto wisdom and i made up my mind that i was going to build a course out of that experience to teach the school of ministry students that as 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 long as life looks it is deceptively brief there is a hymn that says life at best is very brief like the falling of a leaf hallelujah are we learning something tonight Please do not take anything I'm teaching tonight personal. It is truth that I will give you. I have seen people in old age today with nobody to help them. They walk alone as though they were never, they never had the privilege of youthfulness. And the question I'm tempted to ask is what did they do with those days? Because at that time the lean cows have come to eat up the fat ones. I told you yes can eat years there are people today who retired as directors ceos and yet they may not be able to raise hundred thousand with honor because during their time of glory they did not know that seasons change there are musicians today respectfully speaking there are sportsmen today once upon a time if you mention their names people will stay awake but today they can move around on the road and you see them and not even care about them why because seasons have changed is that true yes once upon a time in this nation when you mention certain names once upon a time in africa when you mention certain names as powerful as these great men are look at men like reinhard bonke look at men like t.l osborne look at men like um, billy graham as much as we love them 
the truth is whether we like it or not according to the law of seasons eventually they have gone seasons that means everybody who finds himself on the stage you better realize someone left there before you got there and realize that very soon the light of destiny is pushing you out now listen there is the deception that comes with these seasons of glory it makes you believe you will never leave the stage for any reason this has deceived men of god this has deceived people in politics this has also deceived parents they forgot that these children will one day grow and they will be young and they treated the children in an evil way many of them today are old and wrinkled and left alone by angry adults who were once babies there are nations today who did not take advantage of their human capital to invest in the young people during the seasons of power most of those young people are now the thieves that cause mayhem in society There are people who rose in honor. They never raised anybody in their lifetime. They didn't raise anybody from their community. They are the only ones. And when the devil attacked them, he got them alone. Because they had no support system. Learn the wisdom that comes from this mystery tonight. Pharaoh, the dream is twice because it is established. There is nothing you can do against it. You can only build a system to overcome it. Hallelujah. It is a dangerous thing to once be relevant. It is a dangerous thing that in your lifetime you are still alive and yet your life becomes a warning, not a message. They tell people if you want to go far, please don't use this reference. You are still alive and breathing. Are we learning? So we know that there are alternating seasons in the life of anyone. The moment you see rainy season, rainy season comes with a letter from dry season, I am coming. The moment you see dry season, dry season comes with a letter from rainy season, I am coming. If you receive the season and don't receive the letter, that prepares you for the next season, you will be in trouble. The moment you see men celebrating you and saying, wow, triumphant entry, remember, one day the same people will say, crucify him. The moment you see people saying, crucify him, remember that one day John will also stand close to the cross. Listen, if you master seasons, you will remain relevant through seasons. I'm speaking because some of you are in these seasons right now. You can be in a season where nobody knows you. You're a man of God who is being made by God. Nobody knows you, no invitation, no fame, no glory, no nothing. And if you do not do anything with that season, the day your season of appearing comes, prepared or not. You see, do you know once upon in a time in my life, I had the luxury to pray I could lock myself even if it's for three days at will and not come out because I had the time. Today, I don't have that kind of time. If I want to make that kind of time, I will have to go out of my way. Many programs will suffer just because I want three days to myself. Changing seasons. Young lady, now that you do not have children, God says fast for three days. And he said, no, you don't know the days that are coming. You don't know the responsibility of the attacks that can come on your children. You are enjoying the fat cows. And God is saying, pray. Young man, you want to start ministry? You are moving around with protocol. God is saying, nonsense, sit down. There are days coming. You do not know the, the demons that attack mantles and anointings. Prepare. Because where I am sending you to, you will need power in the spirit for the kind of results you want. Can I tell you, don't let people pity you out of preparing for great seasons. Sometimes people can love you too much. They will say, this is too much. This fasting is too much. This thing is too much. They don't know the other seasons coming. 
Ali Katoshka de Branda Gatusiata Shaneke Bereko to Siatabala. God says, I want to take you and give you an influence with kings. And the Lord says, go for another degree. Go for another program. And they say, it's too much. And the devil is deceiving you. And time is going. Don't say there's time, there's time for everything. But let me tell you, there are, when you buy a product, there's something written on the product. Best before. That means if you want to enjoy this product, consume it. Before certain times. Imagine a man of 45 years going to primary school. Yes, no knowledge is a waste. But as far as I'm concerned, if I'm the teacher, that man will not write exams. I will just give him tea and say go. Because I know that he's most likely wasting his time there. When the young people are jumping and rejoicing, that man will be thinking of his child. What is wrong with my child now? Seasons. There are four major seasons in a man's life the seasons in every man's life is broken into four 25 year circles please listen there is the morning stage of every man's life this represents the first 25 years of your life whether you are prepared or not the first 25 years of every man's life represents the morning stage this is the stage where you can make mistakes and go life scot-free. Life will forgive you. There are certain things that should have happened to your destiny at that stage. By the time you are 25 and certain things have not happened, time is already against you. According to God's expectation, by 25 years, you should have found Jesus Christ. You should not be loitering around hoping to guess what salvation is. No. By 25, you should be filled with the Holy Ghost. By 25, you should have mastered the keys of the kingdom. By 25, you should have built strategic destiny relationships. There are many people who got born again at 30. You are already five years behind schedule of seasons. Someone of 18 years can be playing with his life. You who is 35 years, you are joining him to play. Who is foolish? That person can play around with his life and repent later on and still walk within the 25 years. You, that time has already gone. You don't have that time again. First 25 years of your life is a time for massive investment in your spirit, a prayer bank, word bank. That is the time to have a track record of commitment to God. The next phase of your life is called the afternoon stage. The morning stage is the stage of learning. The afternoon stage is the stage of execution. Represents the next 25 years of your life. From 26 to 50 years. That is not the stage of rehearsal. If you are still learning at that stage, you are behind time. You are merging two seasons in one. That means you need an extra grace from God. I'm saying it because there are many people, God is telling you that right now, you miss the first 25 years of your life. You are in the second 25 years, but you are still carrying over the, f the first 25 years. It means you must pray more. It means you must invest more time. An old man of 60 years is sleeping. You too, you are sleeping. Are we learning something tonight? The stage of execution. Do you know in this nation, there are people who became presidents in their 30s across the world. Is that true? Jesus Christ. Oh, I love Jesus. Look what he was doing at age 12. You now understand? Because he knew. That destiny is measured in time. At age 12, when his contemporaries were running around and managing the pressures of teenage, what do you think Jesus was doing? He was at the temple with those who had gone ahead redeeming the time. When his parents came to drive him, he said, Do you not know I should be about my father's business? That is a 12-year-old child. For the next 18 years, we do not hear of Jesus again. The next time he shows up, he's a 30-year-old man. Prepared with stature. And in three and a half years, he finished his assignment and signed it. Till today, nobody has been able to produce that kind of result.
30 years. Imagine someone who gets born again at 45. The time it will take you to know the Holy Ghost. The time it will take you to find a Bible-believing church. The time it will take you to learn the principles of the kingdom. Is God speaking to us? So the second season of your life, the season of execution, walking in the fullness of purpose and your assignment from 26 to 50. The third season in your life is called the evening stage. This is the stage of legacy where at this point you are not trying to prove a point again. It is expected that within that time, that time of your life, the afternoon stage, like the sun shines brightest in the afternoon. That is the stage of maximum kingdom impact. By the time you are 51, down to 75, is a stage of legacy. That's when you begin to build institutions that reflect your value. Institutions that are prepared to outlive you. You are not successful until there is a generation that becomes loyal to your thoughts. You cannot mark your script and give yourself a grade. It is one generation that will tell us whether you are successful. Our success is proof that Jesus succeeded. It is the success of your children that show whether you succeeded. No matter what you are enjoying now, you are still a student. It is when someone comes who, is, who comes out of you and now succeeds... That is when we will know you have succeeded. Is God helping us tonight? Yes. The stage of legacy. That is the stage where you turn back and begin to mentor and build the generations coming. Teaching them from your mistakes. Passionately pouring your heart and telling them when you get here, even though it does not look like there is a hole, jump it. I didn't know this when I was there and it cost me 10 years extra. Hear me? There are young people today who are sleeping 8 hours in one day. Let me give you an advice. If you sleep 8 hours out of 24 years, by the time you are 30 years, you've slept for 10 years of your life. Sleeping for 10 years at age 30. Can I tell you the honest truth? I say this with every sense of respect to everybody, but particularly to the young people. Be careful with this overseeking comfort at an early stage in life. We have a generation that is so passionate about comfort. At age 20, you are already looking for, don't, don't, I don't want anything that pushes me. Hi. You read the Bible for two hours, you sleep for four hours. I can't go until there is a car that moves me around. You have to be careful. I must walk the walks of him that sent me while it is day. Jesus himself said it. For the night cometh. Even for Jesus, where no man can walk again. There are people today who had an opportunity to have built estates and built buildings that they and their children and their children's children will eat from. But selfishness and distraction did not allow them to know they were getting old. Lo and behold, they opened their eyes and now they are 60, 70 years and not even a single building of residence. I'm not being sarcastic, forgive me. But I have to teach this. And many of us young people, we spent our lives criticizing men of God, criticizing parents, criticizing politicians, forgetting that we are also coming to that same stage. Many of us are right here and we are messing up even more than those that we criticize. Because the time it takes to prepare is the same time it takes to criticize. While you are criticizing and talking about others, time is still moving you forward. Prepared or not, one day the curtain will be opened. Is God speaking to us now? The year of legacy and the final stage of your life, the last 75 years, is called the stage of rest. Not death, rest. If you started this journey completely, at 75 
you should almost be ready to finish your assignment only consolidating and blessing the name of the Lord. There are few people who were able to demonstrate that in their lifetime. One of them was Billy Graham, a man who finished his assignment and was still alive to turn back. Everyone knew that this man had finished his assignment. The mystery of Pharaoh's dream is a lesson for everybody alive that seasons are changing. Seasons are changing. Seasons of opportunity will come. Now let us look at Joseph's advice. I have to run. I wish I had time to walk this. Genesis 41, 37. And the thing was good in the eyes of Pharaoh and in the eyes of all his servants. 38. And Pharaoh said unto his servants, Can we find such a one as this is, in whom the Spirit of God is? And Pharaoh said unto Joseph, For as much as God has shown ye all this, there is none so discreet and wise as thou art. Thou shalt be over my house, and according to my watch shall all my people be ruled. Thy word shall all my people be ruled. Only in the throne will I be greater than thou. And Pharaoh said unto Joseph, See, I have set thee over all the land of Egypt. He took his ring from his hand and put it upon Joseph's hand and arrayed him in vestures of fine linen. Now, you know that a season just changed for Joseph. Forget about the season for Egypt. Joseph's season just change. Yesterday you were a young man who would need to beg for water but God took you on the seasons for helping interpret seasons. Your own season too has changed. But Joseph, make sure you follow your own advice first because that law also applies to you. He took off his ring, put it on Joseph's hand, arrayed him in vestures of fine linen, put a gold chain about his neck. Our generation call this, I don't know what, I have arrived. That's it there. Ladies and gentlemen, that is that deceptive demon of arrival there. I have arrived. And he made him to ride on the second chariot which he had. And they cried before him, bowed the knee, and made him ruler over all the land of Egypt. 44. And Pharaoh said unto Joseph, I am Pharaoh, and without thee shall no man lift up his hand. My goodness. Everybody say seasons. Ah, did Joseph know that one day his bones they would take out of Egypt? Look at a man who is receiving a public global commendation. I am Pharaoh, and without you shall no man lift up his hand or foot in all the land of Egypt. Read on, please. And Pharaoh, he called Zaphnath Paniah, and he gave him a wife, Asenath, the daughter of Potipharah, the priest of On. And Joseph went out over all the land of Egypt. Let's go to, okay, we'll read down to 49. And then we'll jump to 53, just to redeem time. Joseph was how old? Please talk to me. How old was Joseph? Why do you think the Bible would add his age? What do we need his age to do? To know the reality of seasons. He was 30 years old when he stood before Pharaoh, king of Egypt. And Joseph went out from the presence of Pharaoh and went throughout the land, all the land of Egypt. And in the seven plenteous years, the earth brought forth by handfuls. And he gathered up the food of the seven years, which were in the land of Egypt, and laid up the food in the cities. The food of the field, which was round about every city, he laid up in the same. Last verse and then we'll move to 53. And Joseph gathered corn as the sand of the sea. Very much until he left numbering for it was without number go to 53 and the seven years of plenteousness that was in the land of egypt were ended seven years of plenty can end 
seven years of plenty can end. Seven years of plenty can end. Next verse. And the seven years of death began to come according as Joseph had said. And the death was in all the land and in all the land of Egypt. But in all the land of Egypt there was bread. Uh -huh. And when all the land of Egypt was famished, the people cried unto Pharaoh for bread. And Pharaoh said unto all the Egyptians, Go to Joseph. Go to the person who has the formula for connecting seasons. Go to that man. He's mastered how to preserve bread regardless season. Let me tell you this. When you see people whose results don't change and it looks like they are ever rising, it's not because this law does not happen. They have followed the advice of Jacob, of Joseph. Of Joseph. So even when there is famine, there is still rainy season in their life. And you are wondering, is this rainy season universal? No. They created their own Goshen out of Egypt. Are we together now? Yes. When the Bible says the path of the just is as a shining light, it says it because there is an advantage of the wisdom of Joseph to the saints. So what was the advice of Joseph? Very quickly, because we have to pray. Is someone learning something? Hmm. The advice of Joseph was save and invest. This is not in financial terms at all. Just pay attention. Save and invest. Save what? The first thing to save is time. Not things. You have not really saved if all you save are things. The Bible says, not as unwise, redeeming the time. The most precious commodity to save and to invest is time. Not things. Not money. If you lose time and you have money, you lost. Record it as a loss. If you gain things. Hallelujah. And so his advice was save 20% of those seasons. And begin to invest those seasons for the days of that the reality that happens to all men you cannot stop the seasons but you can shield and immune yourself to a point that you and all who are connected to you will not even know that this to sustain impact and relevance based on joseph's interpretation of pharaoh's dream i give you a few keys since he said what do you do during these seasons of opportunity that happen to all, there are many of us who are in the heart of that season. Your seven fat cows, your seven fat plants, they are flourishing. But remember that seasons are passing. Let me give you a counsel from the word of God. Number one, the first thing we do with seasons of opportunity is that we use them to build capacity. Your first assignment during seasons of plenty, during seasons of abundance, during seasons of ease, is capacity. Second Kings chapter 4, when you read from verse 1 to 6, this was the story of the wife of the sons of the prophet. Remember, the, it took the union of the vessel and the oil for profits to come. Oil alone does not give profit. It is oil with plenty vessels that is equal to profit if you have great oil and small vessel you will still be poor the woman had oil in her house but the vessel was small when you have seasons of opportunity seasons of health seasons of youthfulness seasons where your destiny helpers are around maximize those seasons to build capacity spiritual capacity intellectual capacity use these seasons to build capacity are we learning so that's the first thing we do with seasons of opportunity number one build capacity your prayer life your word life your time with god 
Because you see, there are responsibilities that leadership of all sorts will bring into your life that may not allow you the convenience to do certain things with the liberty you had to do before again. Hallelujah. Number two, what do you do with these seasons? The seven, your seven years of abundance, your seven years of fatness. The second thing you do is build quality relationships. Build quality relationships. That's what we do with these seasons. Build quality relationships. Ecclesiastes chapter 4, please. Let's hurry up. We'll read from verse 9, 9 to 12, Ecclesiastes chapter 4. Build relationships. Here's what the Bible says. Two are better than one because they have a good reward for their labor. So the two people must not be lazy. The Bible says two of them have labor. Is that true? It says, for if they fall, one will lift up his fellow. But woe to him that is alone when he falleth. For he hath not another to help him up. Uh -huh. Again, if two lie together, they have heat. But how can one be warm alone? Twelve. And if one prevail against him, two shall withstand him. And a threefold cord is not easily broken. Can I tell you, during your seasons of plenty, your seven years of plenty, that is the time to pray in the spirit and say, Lord, bring destiny relationships to my life. Bring quality people who love me because of me. Quality people who are not just looking for money or titles. Our world is full of people who will prey on you and climb you like ladders to where they want to go. You need quality people. Can I tell you this? Woe betides a man who is full of men but does not have relationships. How many people today have stepped into their dark days and their dark moments and there's almost no one look at jesus your jesus my jesus when jesus was on his way to god got a question where were all the people who received miracles from his crusade those who had five thousand um, um, um five loaf and two fish where were they where were all the women who were singing his praises hosanna blessed is he who comes in the name of the lord where were even his disciples they ran away. Paul so ran away. Paul called a small girl woman because he was running away from Jesus. I mean Peter. Peter. You look like you have... No, 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 no. I've not been with him. It was only John that stayed when Jesus was on the cross. Do not let circumstances choose your relationships. Choose your relationships with understanding. Sit down with the word and with the spirit of wisdom and ask yourself, what kind of destiny do I desire? Ah, woe betides any man when you are in moments. I've taught you this about relationships. That's why in dark days and seasons in your life and there is nobody to call you to say, I hear you just lost this election. But we are standing by you. We love you genuinely. I hear you just lost money. One billion naira just disappeared. Can I tell you, if you need food, provided I am alive, your children will not beg for food. I will keep paying their school fees till you recover. Can I tell you, not everybody is greedy. There are sincere people. They, they are hard to find, but pay the price to find them. Let me ask you an honest question. The first time I taught this message, I asked that question and I want to ask it now. Is there someone right now, as you're looking at me, is there someone in your life you can honestly call for help, no matter what time of the day or night, and they will get up and respond to you? If you don't have such a person, your life is in danger now. I am telling you. Apostle, I am, uh, what they call that thing? Where people like you... Um, they like you, uh, oh dear, I can't remember it now. No, no, it's not photogenic. Photogenic is camera. Yes. Yes. Psycho fans. I, there's something in me that makes everybody like me. Think again. Let me tell you. Think again. 
Men are selfish. When you look like a ladder, you will see many of them. Let them just see you looking like a ladder. And here they come, ready to climb messlessly. There are many of us here right now. The reason why you are almost dying of depression is because there is nobody in your life who can stand and say, let's pray. I came to spend the whole weekend with you because I hear you were bereaved. I canceled all my programs. And you say, why did you do that? Because of love. To let you know there are still genuine people. Genuine people are scarce. They are like gold. Pay the price to find them early. Is someone learning now? I tell you, if you have the wealth of men, genuine men who love Jesus and love you, you are wealthy indeed. Yes. There are people today who may not have connections. They may not have educational qualifications. But God has honored them with the gift of men. They can call and say, please, I don't mean to insult you, but there is someone who is sick. And they say, for you, I'm on my way coming. Do you know your name can be a key or a padlock? Your lifetime is what decides it. There are people today who have changed their names because if they ever tell people they are carrying that surname, they'll say, which one? Mention the name again. That other one, where was he in 1971 to 1975? Oh, he worked with railway. Go out of my office. And you, you just refresh a painful wound. And something that was a key becomes a padlock. I forbid your name from becoming a padlock. Is someone learning tonight? Yes. Build relationships, powerful relationships. I may not have the school fees to pay for my child. And someone says, over my dead body, I remember what you did for me in 1981. And I vow that for as long as I'm alive, there are people who have gone to be with the Lord today, but they went to be with the Lord smiling because they saw people standing before them that they knew will make sure their children don't cry. And they say, I will live in peace because I know that someone will be there to defend me. There are people who, it's not the fear of death that makes them cry. It's the fact that they know that if, they, if, they, if their breath ceases to day, they will shred their entire names and their families into pieces. Please like what I'm sharing. I'm teaching you by the Spirit. This is what we gain when we come to the house of God. So, all the people you are insulting in your office because you have money, all the people you are insulting around, for us young people who are insulting fathers, insulting everybody, I give you a, I don't know if it's a good or bad news, but it's a news, a serious news, that one day, one day, you will reap from that seed you are sowing. There are people today who are not supposed to have certain jobs, but just because they mention this, you know this man, let me tell you, in so, 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 so years, and a job interview becomes a long story. And after you talk to the person, you say, by the way, where are you staying? He says, I honestly, as I'm, I just came to Abuja, I don't even know the name of the area where I am. And the person says, go and get him a place at my cost. And you see the person and say, I hope you are doing things correctly. Say, I'm reaping from the benefits of someone's relationship. Be careful how you treat people. Be careful how you treat people. Be careful how you treat people. One day the person you are looking down, you will open the door of an office and see him sitting down. And he will say, welcome, you can be seated because from here you are going to prison. Straight. Straight. Give him minerals. As soon as you are done, you are going to prison straight. I know we are laughing, but I hope we are hearing what God is saying. Because God is speaking. There are many people today who are surrounded by men and women who can help them. Can I tell you, when you find out that a man is close to many helpers and yet nobody is helping him, 
Don't be too quick to conclude that the helpers are bad people. Ask questions. What happened? What happened? Why are you surrounded by people who can open doors for you and yet everyone ignores you? Could it be that you are reaping the harvest of the seeds you so gallantly sowed? I made up my mind that I do not want in my lifetime let it never be that one day you mention Joshua Selman and someone says, no, I intended blessing you but now that you have mentioned this name, walk out of here. Politicians, one day you will not be in that office. Men of God, whether Jesus comes or you meet him, in any case, you are going to move. That for sure. Father, mother, the baby you now treat anyhow will be the one to take care of you in old age when seasons change. Young boy, learn to be responsible now. They will not give you money any, every day. A day will come, your father will say, at your age, I was already out. Go out of my house now. And prove, make full proof of your ministry. Maximize relationships. Are we learning? So I, I, I asked a question. That was what led me into this discussion. Is there somebody in your life today who you can call and he can stand with you in prayer? Is there someone in your life today who you can open the secrets of your destiny and still go back and sleep with two eyes closed? That you can tell the person, our family is going through an attack now. And the person says, over my dead body, as for me and my, my wife and my children, be sure that we are awake praying for you. We will pray till breakthrough comes. They will pray as if it's their own child that is going to hell. Do you have such people in your life? Woe betides a man who is alone when these seasons come. The Bible, the Bible gives us a very interesting rendition. There's no time for that now to, to check that. But you would have read about a man in scripture who heard that his boss was going to drive him away. When he heard that his boss would drive him away, he called all the people who were owing the boss. How much do you owe? Let me reduce something. M note my face. Note my face. And when the boss drove him, he called them and said, Where are you people? I scratched your back yesterday. Oh, yeah. My back is scratching me now. <laughs> Even though the reason for relationship should not be selfishness. should be that you love them genuinely. You have to go and pray this night. And say, Lord, give me the gift of destiny covenant friends. I'm tired of general relationships. Oh, really? You don't have a child? Two years, no child? I'm fasting and praying with you. We are getting into this together. No, no, don't worry. I'll handle my... No way. When people love you just because of money or anointing or position, and most people will, that's the, that will be the basis. Can I tell you this? When people are clapping for you before you receive it, look well. Who is clapping? Because some people are clapping for themselves through you. Oh, I'm happy that my money bank is still alive. You are healthy. Are you okay? Because I'm about to ask you for school fees. There is a building project that is going on. I can get you Panadol. I can show a seed. Are you alright? What they are saying is my project. My fundraiser. Are you alive? The day they roof that house. If you like, die on that day. And many of us need to be discerning. Because just because people laugh and celebrate you, you draw them to the holy of holies of your destiny. No. Put a strict spiritual immigration officer around your life. That before you move from outer court to inner court, you must pass that test indeed. From inner court to the most holy place. Just because you meet someone and the person loves you, I said, my God, Apostle Joshua Selman, you preach so powerfully. In five minutes, you've told them everything about your life. Just to let you know that, in fact, my mother is a witch. It's an issue we are still dealing with now. Who asked you? Look at just five minutes. 
And I'm, are you aware that that shoe I even wore, I, I borrowed it? Come. In fact, let's sit down. And for five hours, you are by the side of your bed discussing things. And the person laughs until two, two weeks later, you find out that the person was actually looking for your enemy. It's just that he came to you. And now you open up several things about your life to your peril. So teach us to number our days that we may apply our hearts unto wisdom. Let people qualify for access to your destiny. Don't open up the gates of your destiny to just everybody. Love everybody, but don't relate with everybody. No. Association is not by force. Choose it with respect to God's agenda and your destiny. Are we together? And beware of people who want to be your friends without changing their values. Be careful. If you come to my house and the protocol is to take off your shoes, you take off your shoes. You see that? There are people who want to come with their shoes and sit. This is just a parable, not doesn't mean literally. If I come to your life and I find out that your priority is Jesus, I must honor Jesus and it must remain so. I cannot want to create an exemption and yet want to be close to you. It doesn't work that way. Beware of people who do not respect your values and yet want relationships with you. They may be sincere, but they are dangerous people. So number one, what do you do with seasons of abundance? Build capacity. Number two, build relationships. Number three, what do you do during these seasons? Selflessly invest in blessing and transforming as many lives. The third thing you do with these seasons of opportunity, your seven years, selflessly invest in blessing and transforming as many lives. We see this in the life of David. We're about to pray. First Samuel chapter 22 from verse 1 and 2, please. First Samuel chapter 22 from verse 1 and 2. The Bible says, David therefore departed thence and escaped to the cave of Adullam. And when his brethren and all his father's house heard it, they went there to meet him. This was when David was running away from Saul. Look at the caliber of people who came to David. And everyone that was in distress, and everyone that was in debt, and everyone that was discontented, they gathered themselves unto him and he became captain over them and they were with him about 400 men can you imagine the level of selflessness it takes to be captain over these people you, are, you can't expect anything in return from these people people who were distressed people who were in debt people who were already disenfranchised and now he became captain over them by the time we get to 2 Samuel chapter 23 Second Samuel, please, chapter 23, from verse 8. Second Samuel 23, from verse 8. Their names are changed. They were no longer weak men. These be the names of the mighty men whom David had. David turned weak men who were in distress. Weak men who were almost in debt. And he transformed them by selflessly investing in them. Until their names changed to the mighty men that David had. The Tagmonite that sat in the seat. Chief among the captains. Watch this. It says the same was Adino, the Esnite. He lifted up his fare against 800 whom he slew one time. What mighty man. Next verse please. And after him was Eleazar the son of Dodo, the Ahohite. One of the three mighty men with David. When they defied the Philistines that were gathered together to battle. And the men of Israel were gone away. Next verse please. The Bible says he arose and smote the Philistines until his hand was weary and his hand clave to his sword. And the Lord wrought great victory that day. And the people returned after him only to the spoil. Watch this. Next verse, please. And after him, Shammah, the son of Agi, the Hararite. He says, and the Philistines were gathered together on, onto a troop 
where was a piece of ground full of lentils, and the people fled from the Philistines. We're reading to 17. Watch this. But he stood in the midst of the ground and defended it and slew the Philistines, and the Lord gave him great victory. Remember who they were before. Look what David turned them to become. And three of the thirty chiefs went down and came to David in the harvest time in the cave of Adullam. And the troop of the Philistines pitched in the valley of Rephaim. David was then in a hold and of the garrison of the Philistines in Bethlehem. And the Bible says, David long and said, watch this. Ah, it's good to raise men. David said, oh, that I would drink of the pool of the waters of the well of Bethlehem, which is at the gate. And those who he had raised said, what did you say? You said you are thirsty. You want water from Bethlehem. Watch this. And the mighty men break through the host of the Philistines and drew water out of the well of Bethlehem that was by the gate and took it and brought it to David. Nevertheless, David said, you've killed too many people. What warriors? What did I make you become? Don't expect loyalty from anybody you did not invest in. Don't appear in people's future and claim a stake in their lives. There are many people today who have not invested in building anybody. You just gather successful people and you want to claim their lives. No, sir. If you were there during their dark days, they will remember you in glory. There are politicians who have gotten this right. Others got it wrong. There are men of God who have gotten this right. Others got it wrong. There are parents who have gotten this right. Others got it wrong. May you get it right. Every opportunity God gives you, invest in someone. Some of them will ignore you. Some of them will turn back. Don't worry. You will always find faithful people. Say, we remember, we have pledged our loyalty. Just because you are thirsty, they will pull down with people of leadership. Visionary leaders do not maintain followers. They turn those leaders, those followers to leaders. And like Dr. Miles will say of blessed memory, they will now turn the leaders into agents of change. Can I tell you this? Do not allow a generation pass without having your investment represented there. Some of these children that many of you see and push them in a bit to look for Joshua Selman, they are the next apostles you are pushing. Mighty men. It is my passion that God will think for yourself. I'm raising you for myself. That's already selfishness. That you invest in people selflessly. Can I tell you this? They may ignore you for a while. But the reality of your investment will bring them. One day they will realize that not everybody is that selfless. For someone you can start with your children. There are many pet or bad, they land them outside. So those they are close to are those who fed them. Intellectually and spiritually and otherwise. Can I tell you this? No matter how anointed I am, no matter how blessed I am, if I go to someone today in the generation of our fathers like Baba Deboe, even if I remove a human head and fix it back as a miracle, they will thank me, but they will be on their way to redemption camp because that is the voice that grew with them. The key to transgenerational relevance is don't just impact a generation, grow with that generation. Grow with that generation. Laboriously invest in the people. They may not reward you, but invest sincerely. A day will come when the presidents of nations will be people who are fruits of your apostleship. Impact them sincerely and watch them grow. Their honor and their lifting is what will keep you up. God does not throw people. He lifts people. Everything lifted is lifted because it is connected to the ground. No matter how high a skyscraper is, it does not float. Anything that floats in the air will come down. Number one, build capacity. Number two, build strategic destiny relationships. Number three, selflessly invest in blessing and transforming as many lives. 
Apostle, but you are just talking. You don't know how many children I brought to my house to raise. Almost 90% of them have become robbers. Don't worry. You will reap what you sow, not where you sowed. You can sow in Nigeria and reap in US. It's still your harvest. One child among the many who will do well will be equivalent to 100 children. Hallelujah. Invest in transforming as many. I heard a man of God say this. It is better to be kind than to be right. There are many times you will need to prefer kindness than being right. The pressure to prove you are right, it is nobler to pursue kindness. There are times you are wrong, but you are right, but you will still fail. Right does not always mean success. Right does not always mean victory. But kind will always mean victory. Hallelujah. Are we learning? The final thing and then we'll pray. Thank you for your patience. What do I do with my seasons of abundance? Study and carefully follow those who have maintained relevance through seasons. Study and carefully follow those who have maintained relevance through seasons. Hebrews chapter 6 and verse 12. Did I give you a title for tonight's teaching? The law of seasons. You may want to write that down. The law of seasons. It says that ye be not slothful, but followers of them who through faith and patience inherit the promise. Every time I have the honor of speaking to any of our fathers or mentors or senior people, whether in ministry, in life, who have gone ahead of me, I don't approach them as Apostle Joshua Selman. I go there like a sponge, like an ignorant person ready to learn wisdom. And my goodness, sometimes in five minutes, they will tell you something that will define the next ten years of your life. Let me give you an advice. When you stand before greatness, don't contribute. Listen. When you stand, don't go and stand before people you know. They are all billionaires, respectfully speaking. You may not have anything yet. I'm very quick. You are, no, no, no. It's, it's, it's not First Bank. It's um, um, Access Bank. How much do you have? Just keep quiet, whether you are right or wrong. Listen and learn. You stand before senior fathers of faith. And they are, no, no, no. You made a mistake. It's Acts chapter 2. I just read it. Whenever you stand before greatness, minimize contribution. Be a listener. It is the secret of receiving from the great. Sometimes what they will say, they may fail in statistics, they may misquote scriptures, don't worry. Adaptation is proof of honor. Just endure. Be looking for what they are saying that can bless them. Mama, how were you able to raise 11 children and the least among them is a professor today? Mama may not be able to speak English. Endure. Just listen to what she's saying. There is a formula that through the frailty of our communication will drop to your hands. When you receive it, you can change your people. Can I tell you this? Every time results are consistent, it means they happen by laws. Consistent results are proof that you have gained mastery. Show us the ancient path. Will you lead us along eternal highway? We want to follow the ways of Jesus. We want to enter your rest. Will you show us the ancient path? Lead us along eternal highway. We want to follow the footsteps of Jesus. We want to enter. What is the conclusion? Lamentation chapter 3 and verse 27. The Bible says it is good that a man bear his yoke in his youth. There is timing. Every time is not the most convenient time. Now listen to me. You see the reason why we pray for things like restoration and things like speed. Because by default, there are people whose seasons 
are already against you. But these systems of advantage come by the Spirit to help you remedy. Many of you right now, your seasons of glory are almost changing, but you did not build capacity. The time you should be spent praying, you were criticizing and talking about people. The time you should be fasting and building energy in the Spirit. Now they have made you the pastor of a parish. In two weeks, you have no messages again. Because the 10 years of preparation as an usher, the 10 years of preparation as a, a sanctuary keeper, it was not about sanctuary keeping. It was preparation. But you ignored it because your eye was looking at the stage. And the preparation that should happen within that season. There are many clerks today who are governors in disguise. But rather than learning, they are complaining. My boss is a greedy man. He gives everybody 10, 10 million. Men of God come and he gives them 50 million. I am here cleaning and God is saying you will remain a clerk there because of that evil heart. Someone can be cleaning and saying, let me listen to the advice. When you become a governor, be a responsible person. And the clerk hears it and writes it down. And someday God says, you have passed the test. Hear me? Every time God gives you an opportunity to serve, he gave you an opportunity to learn. Don't waste it. You will not always be a student. One day, you will be a lecturer yourself. But make sure whilst you are a student, you look beyond the lecturer's limitations and learn what you need to learn. I thank God for today, for the lessons and the privilege and the opportunities that he granted to learn. Some of the people who God used to teach me were harsh people. Some of the people who God used to teach me, I mean, they, it was as if they were mising the information. Can you endure so that you will learn and be built? There are many of you, you need to see a man of God, for instance, maybe your pastor or someone, and five minutes you say they are wasting my time. You put your hand in your pocket. What are you doing? Oh, I just started a walk and I just need a blessing or one or two words of advice. You won't rise that way. Already, that state qualifies you to remain like that. I aspire to be a politician. I hear that there are some senators around and let me just hear. You know, these men are even dull. They just read the election. They don't have anything to say. And God says, look at the kind of heart that wants to be governor one day. Can I tell you this? Learn to honor everyone ahead of you. They didn't get there by luck. Just because you don't understand how they got there. When you see consistent results, respect it. Even if the persona of the individuals is not inviting, endure. Some of them are your parents. Some of them are your loved ones. Endure. A woman who may have been, say for instance, a widow for 30 years. And yet none of her children has begged for bread. And you sit down with one child and you are struggling. And she says, can I advise you? Hey, Mama, you are old school. You don't know what to say. 30 years? You've heard me say it. I'm both old and new school. It depends on what you are talking about. Sometimes this idea of new school, old school is why people go down. It says, remove not the ancient landmark. Don't change what works. Are we together? Now, I tell you the truth by the God of heaven. The season you now are in, no matter what you think about it, that season will not remain like that. Your victory will remain, but seasons change. If you obey the advice of Joseph, O oh man of God, politician, man, woman, your season can always remain rainy and bright but just because egypt has food does not mean the whole world has food it was one man's advice that kept them to the point that even jacob although he was a prophet hunger drove him to egypt because even as a prophet he was not discerning to know there are parents today who can go to be with the lord with joy 
Because they took advantage of the seasons before them. And they built something worthwhile. To the young, you have time. Look for wisdom. To the old, you have wisdom. Please don't die with it. Let the young receive. When God wants to help young men, He takes the wisdom of the old and adds it to the time of the young. That's how He blesses them. Apostle, but I've made so many mistakes in my life and it looks like time is gone. No. Time is not gone. Even if you are Abraham, God is able to make time be restored. Now you see the relevance of the statement, and I will restore the years. Apostle, I am now 45 years. As a man of God, I'm still learning the fundamental rudiments of, of ministry that I should have learned when I was 18, 19. Fear not. The Holy Ghost can accelerate your journey. Apostle, I just got born again when Koinonia started. Where do I start from? All my children are now teenagers. How can I help them? God can help you. That's why he sent us. We represent the past that you lost. We have come as God's instrument of mercy. Apostle, I lost 30 years. And God says you have gained it back. Now, you may not be able to do anything about yesterday. But you can begin today. To be intentional about your life. Intentional about everything you are doing. Some of you who are in ministry may need to take a break. And go and settle down and learn how this thing works. Rather than shadow boxing and repeating mistakes and failures forever. The moment you find out that your life is not producing consistent results. Do not be ashamed to stop what you are doing and learn. Some of you right now, you are hearing me, I'm speaking to you by the Spirit. Do not be ashamed to go back to the school of the Spirit and learn. You still have time to learn. Apostle, I'm a pastor. God has called me to be a prophet. But I don't know anything about the prophetic. And I'm there misleading people. Find strength, dear brother. Find strength, dear sister. There is still a way. There are many of you who are crying because you have lost seasons. Can I tell you this? You may not be able to do anything about yesterday. But you can do something about today. There are some of you, whilst you are sitting right now, you should go back quickly and look for a further certification quickly. Because you have two more years left. Don't allow that door to close. Don't allow mediocres to flatter you and say you are alright. Remember your destiny is with kings. Joseph, you are only in the prison for a while. Don't get the prison life put you down. There are men and women of God who need to go for a retreat. All this exposure everywhere. I am a man of God. You need to go down and say, Lord, what is the next 10 years of ministry going to look like? Just because you were relevant yesterday does not mean you will be relevant tomorrow. There are politicians that need to go to God. Lord, show me the blueprint. What is Nigeria going to look like in the next 10 years? What are the secrets of relevance for the next season? And God says, I have told you, call unto me. Hear me, men of God. In the next 5-10 years, the dynamics of ministry will not be the way it is right now. Sincerity will not be the only key you need. You need to hear the voice of His Majesty telling you this is going to be the way ministry will be like. Businessmen, you may be doing well today, but the next 10 years will not be the way it is now. Life is in circles. You must master the circle of your season. And then, the moment you are in a season of greatness, build capacity, build relationships, raise men, follow the great. I give you four unbeatable keys. You walk with these keys by the Spirit, whether you are in your rainy or dry season, as for your victory, it will remain untouched. Please rise up on your feet. Rise up on your feet. Let's minimize movement, please. We're almost done. Thank you for your patience. In one minute, I'd just like you to reflect on everything I've said. Outside, inside, following online, all through today's service.
the Lord has come with his word of power and word of grace, speaking wisdom to our hearts. The Bible says the laws of the Lord are perfect, reviving the soul. Have I wasted seasons in my life? Some of you are about ending a dry season now. You wasted the rainy season until the dry season revealed that you wasted it. I told you every dry season comes with a letter from the rainy season. I'm coming back. Some of you, God is about to give you another chance with life and destiny. Can you make up your mind? Oh, Samson, you lost your hair, you lost your eyes. But once again, the power is coming again. Make sure you do not make the mistake of yesterday. Turn your contemplation into a prayer right now. Lord, show me mercy and help me to maximize the seasons of my life, to maximize the seasons of my days. Is someone praying? Some of you, the seven lean cows, have eaten up the seven fat ones. But God is giving you another dream, O Pharaoh. God is giving you another dream. And he has sent his Joseph to give you the interpretation. O oh, king, the dream that you have seen is one. You saw it twice because it is established. Build capacity during your day. Build relationships during your day. Raise men during your day. Follow successful people in the kingdom. Follow those who have paid the price to, 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 to put a, 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 a track record of consistency. Please pray. Some of you may need to ask God for forgiveness and mercy. Lord, I repent for insulting the credibility and the track record and the, and the, and the consistency of those who have gone ahead of me. Now I am in their shoes and I see. Someone pray. Pray for these four keys in your life. Please pray them in one minute. Lord, I reject laziness. You may pray, I'm still a young man. Hard work does not kill. Diligence does not kill. I receive grace to burn the candles in the night. I receive grace to buy the books and study. I receive grace to submit to mentorship. I receive grace to be diligent, to build capacity. Is the oil and many vessels that equals profit. It is the oil and many vessels that equals profit. Even if the oil is genuine and the vessels are small, profit will not come. Pray. Lord, bring strategic destiny relationships to my life. Connect me to genuine destiny relationships. Relationships that build, that I will draw from in the days and the times of need. Can you pray for the grace to raise men? Lord, let me not only be a receiver, let me raise men, even if your children. Let there be someone today who can say, thank God I can eat because someone raised me. Thank God I am great. Are you praying? Don't waste your political office. Don't waste your office, dear man of God. It is not the cars you are buying. It is not just the anointing you have. It's not just the clothes you are wearing. The man you are raising is your real world. Hallelujah. Listen. I know many of you are crying. I want you to go back, listen to this message again. Everyone. Please just take it as a spiritual instruction. Go back, go back to YouTube. Listen to it. The law of seasons. And listen to it praying. And find the areas where you are already making mistakes. 
Because for every one of us here, the dream of Pharaoh must happen to you. You will have seven years of plenty. And you will have seven years where the lean cows will eat up the great ones. You will not always have that person give you money every week. Now that you are getting the money every week, make sure you save and begin to do something reasonable in your life. You will not always have a free access. People just give you access. One day, it will not be as easy as this. I remember years ago, I used to tell my beloved precious people in Zaria, they are following connecting by faith. And I used to tell them those days, my dear people, I love you with all my heart. Listen, one day you will not have it easy like this again. I used to draw me to say, now that you have the chance, ask the questions, learn, receive the impartations. Some paid attention, some didn't. Seasons have changed. When you make the same mistake twice, it means there is a deficiency of wisdom. When we make mistakes once, it's called our humanity. When we make mistakes twice, it's called lack of wisdom. For some of you, I'm about to pray. That's why I said no movement. There is a prayer I want to pray for you. This is where the power of God comes into place. Some of you, the clock has shifted. If you have to wait until it goes round, by the time it comes back, you may be 70 years. The prophetic is able to take it back again and say Lord give me another chance you gave me three men of God three millionaires godly siblings and I wasted that opportunity take the hands back again and give me a chance I will be wiser this time you gave me someone who was willing to send me to Harvard to go and study and he said think about it as though they charmed him I wasted that season Right now, I'm even looking for money just to do a three-day course and I don't have it. Lord, would you send such helpers again? Now I am wiser. Lord, you brought all kinds of anointed men to my life. I wasted the opportunity with familiarity and dishonor. Can you please bring them again? One of the most powerful scriptures in the Bible is that an Adam knew his wife again. Again means another chance. Some of you here hear me. Our time is gone, but this will be one of the most powerful messages you would have heard. You were connected to great business partners, but you did not have the patience to learn. Rather than learning their values and their virtues, you were looking for money. All the discussions, today you would have been a very strong person. I'm sorry to say it, please don't feel bad. There are people who had the opportunity to own lands in hectares in this Abuja. They were in this city where land was one million, five million. Till today, they don't have a plot. There are ministries that had opportunities to buy acres of land. Don't always say tomorrow is there. Remember the dream of Pharaoh. The mystery of Pharaoh's dream is both a warning and a roadmap. The ease you have today may not always be so until you program it through your obedience. I want to pray for you. I really came here tonight with a strong burden. I'm not, as, as I'm standing here, I tell you before the Lord, it's only God, is by the strength of the Lord I'm standing here. But it's the passion from my heart. Because I knew that necessity is laid upon me. If I do not teach this, some of you are in an injury time in your destiny right now. Just because nothing has happened yet does not mean nothing will happen. You can choose to correct it this night. Or you can sit and say, it does not matter. Nice preaching. Rema, preach preacher. And then the seasons will catch up with you. Apostle, I had an opportunity when I was put in an office. In that office, it exposed me to relationships. I insulted everybody. And I said, don't worry. Now the person who was sweeping outside is now the owner of a big real estate company somewhere. 
I cannot even go and tell him, help me, because I am ashamed. Believers, we must be wise. We do not have every time to live on earth. Treat people with caution. Treat people with courtesy. Treat people with honor. You may be a wealthy man. Someone may be around you wearing a shoe that looks like he just got it by the roadside. Don't look down on people because of this and that. Let me see how much do you have. Who is your father? Who is your mother? Be careful. The person who is great has already shown you his future. The one who is coming, you don't know how far he can become. This is why I feel sorry for people who tear down people and criticize. You must be careful. You hear that a family has lost a loved one. Don't start arguing and moving around. Rush there and say, how can I help? You hear that a pastor is in pain. Don't sit down and be assessing and talking nonsense. Rush there. Oh, a woman had a miscarriage. I've always told them, mm -mm. how can I help? How can I pray? Always be there at the point of people's pain. Sooner or later you will forget what I've preached. But you will never forget the experience of this encounter. Edge yourself in the history of men's rising. Let them not forget you. Don't wait until people have arrived and you come and claim a stake in their destiny. They will not open the door for you like that. When you find hurting people, don't ignore them. If you cannot do anything, then keep quiet. But don't add to the hurt. Someone is trying to raise money for his house rent. And you are seeing him do his best. All these young boys. <clears throat> if you can help, help. If you cannot help, bid him Godspeed and walk away. Do not let people remember you for evil. Has someone learned something today? Now that you know these things, the Bible says, happy are you if you do them. I pray for you. Please don't kneel, just stand. In the name that is above all names. For every season that you have not utilized well, seasons of opportunity, your seven years that you may have wasted, either as a result of ignorance, as a result of mistakes, I call upon the God of my covenant. And in the name of Jesus, who is the Son of the living God, let there be restoration of seasons for you. Let there be restoration of seasons for you. For many of you, strategic relationships, opportunities to have lifted you today, I call on my God who is your God. Let there be restoration. May God give you another opportunity. In the name of Jesus Christ. Hear me. Some of you, the Lord is ministering to me. Please listen. There are some of you. Some of your parents are still alive. You have never sent anything to them. It's just to complain. You are a millionaire and mama is there. Staying in a rented apartment, drinking water from the well. God is speaking to you. Whether you like it or not, one day they will not be there. Can you give them the memory of joy and glory before they go to be with the Lord? Can I tell you this? Use every opportunity you have now because it will not be there. The hymn writer says, Thus will we pass from the earth and its toiling. He says, only remembered by what we have done. Thank God for cars, but cars will not go with you. Thank God for qualifications, but it will not go with you. Thank God for reputation. Apostle Joshua Selman, it does not go to the grave and it does not go to heaven nor hell. Find the things that matter in this life and commit yourself. Invest in them. And the sons of Issachar, men who had an understanding of the times and they knew what Israel ought to do. Again, I pray for you. Anybody who should be in your life in this season, but lack of discernment took them out of your life, I call upon the God of heaven, may they return back to your destiny now. Every opportunity you lost 
either due to ignorance or dishonor i pray for you may the god of all grace and all mercy may he restore those seasons for you now you hear me for some of you you are at the threshing floor remember you are at a defining moment a few weeks ago i came with a prophetic word here that people were ending seasons and beginning another one can i tell you this the grace to maximize this season you are in now in the name of jesus christ receive the wisdom and the grace receive the wisdom and the grace receive the wisdom and the grace man of god there may be certain levels of the anointing you should have had by now but because of carelessness like the hair of samson i pray for you in the name of jesus you should have get, gotten into deeper levels of the prophetic deeper levels of revelation deeper levels of prayer deeper levels of fasting but you lost these things in the name of jesus i pray for you let there be restoration tonight hear me those in business were wrapping up some of you lost opportunities god gave you opportunities today you would have been feeding not only your family but everybody around you but you are still at a level where you are begging and time is going i pray for you in the name of jesus christ who is the son of the living god leave him leave him just leave the gentleman don't worry let him be i pray for you by the power that raised christ from the dead in the name of jesus may the lord turn the hands of time for your sake hear me jacob had an opportunity for an encounter in genesis 28 he wasted it through lack of discernment he says surely the lord is in this place and i knew not by the time we get to genesis 32 jacob was prepared when that man came he held on to him he said i made this mistake and i paid the price for over 20 years there are mistakes when you make even though you are restored it will take time i pray for you any mistake that will eat up your years any mistake that will eat up the remaining part of your destiny may my god and your god take it out of your life Some of you now is the time to seek the Lord. You keep laughing at people. Oh, these spirit cocoa people you say. Now is the time to seek the Lord. Because the time will come when you may not have the liberty to do what you are doing. I pray for you. Whatever has destroyed your spiritual fire and your zeal for the things of God. When you were on campus, people were getting born again. You laughed at them. It cost you 10 years. Now God is giving you another chance. Don't wait until 20 years from now before you take Jesus serious. In the name of Jesus, let there be restoration of fire. <laughs> Hear me? There are multi-millionaires today and billionaires. There were times where those people were friends to many of our loved ones. They were giving them free opportunities for mentorship. But they did not listen. And now it's costing them a lot some of the bankers some of the top people today respectfully speaking some of them have classmates all around who would have easily taught them but they fail to maximize seasons may god restore those seasons for you in the name of jesus christ koinonia hear me i stand by the privilege of god's grace and i announce to you if there is any season that is about to open up in your life for shame and for destruction by the mercy of god we reverse it now <laughs> wave your hands to jesus and give him thanks wave it as an act of worship lord we thank you thank you for giving us wisdom in the name of jesus christ now listen to me our time is gone i sincerely apologize for stretching you this long but i just had to do it just give me two minutes and we're done there is no cajoling for someone 
the season for your salvation is now. There's no need pretending. You know you need Jesus. You are inside and you're outside and say, Apostle, I'm about to end the first season of my life, the first 25 years, or the second 25 years, or the third one, wherever you are. Apostle, I want to run to Jesus and make it right. Or you are saying, I once gave my heart to Jesus, but it looks like things have gone haywire. Give me the honor of leading you afresh to Jesus. Please, let's stand. We're wrapping up. Everyone inside, the overflows outside, please let them come. I'm going to count one to five. Please leave your seat and honorably come and stand before Jesus. Ready to receive that gift of salvation. One. Don't wait for anyone to be the first. Win that war. Come. Run to Jesus. Are there people coming? Celebrate them. Please celebrate them, Koinonia. I must walk the works of him while it is day. Regardless what you have done, regardless how it is, come. Stand before Jesus. He gives you a new beginning. He gives you a new beginning. Koinonia, keep clapping. Let's encourage them as they come. Please, if you're coming, double up. I'm about to pray right now. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. Thank you. Thank you for coming. You are hidden to the wisdom of Joseph. Remember, the time will come where you may not have this convenience to make this decision again. Don't wait until you are in a sick bed, unable to talk where you have to use your hand to say, I want Jesus. Now you have health and you can speak. Don't run away from Jesus. He can give you a new beginning. It doesn't matter how you have been. Let no man condemn you. This is the house of God. The family of faith. Lift your right hand high to the heavens. Please say this after me loud and clear. Say Lord Jesus. Hello. Scriptures exhort us from the book of Proverbs. It says, My son, attend to my sins. Incline thy ears to my words. Let them not depart from thy eyes. And keep them in the midst of thee. As you have listened to this message, we believe that you are going to reap the blessings thereof if you attend to these words as well. That you will keep these words in the midst of your heart. That no matter the circumstance, your eyes are going to be fixed on these words. And as you have been blessed, we will tell you to share this message. Be an evangelist by sharing to others to be blessed. And then subscribe to this channel for us because we have loads of videos. We have loads of content that is going to make you blessed. That is going to set you on course. That is going to set you ablaze. And don't forget to like for us. Thank you.